Hi, this is Lauren Hines with Craft Some Joy. Welcome to my craft room. As we take a quick 360 degree tour of my space, I just want to mention that I do work in a converted basement area and my space is about a 10 by 18 foot rectangle. I don't have any closets and so my space really is packed to the max. I love doing a lot of different crafts and I have been able to find a little space to do everything that I love right here in my craft room. I'm going to get into the details of how I have everything organized in my craft room, but first I want to share a few organizational tips to get you started thinking about maybe how your space can be organized as I share how I've organized mine. I know everyone's situation is unique as to your interests, supplies, and space, and your craft area may look very different from mine, but I do hope you find insight and inspiration as I share what works for me when I organize. That said, the best place to start is the big picture. What do you love? What is your favorite thing to do? I love looking at pretty things, and I love color, and I love paper crafting. I'm a visual person, and when I surround myself with things that make me happy, my whole mood changes. I get to breathe and enjoy the moment. This is where my own style can shine and where my favorite things come to play. Artwork, handmade items, keepsakes, special gifts, rainbow craft supplies. It's all here. All those fun things have a place in my space. Well, not only do I need my space to be pretty, but I need it to be functional. And that's why I have designated what I like to call my creation stations. This is where I've grouped similar supplies together so everything is organized and ready to use as soon as I'm ready to do a certain type of project. So I have my cutting station with my personal cutting machine, my die cuts, and my die cutting machine. I have my wall oak hubbies, which has the majority of my craft supplies. Now within my creation stations, I also like to group my supplies by category. And this one's a biggie for being able to find what I need and use what I have. I have some great videos that show more detail that you can watch on my channel and that get into some specifics of how I have my supplies organized. But generally, I like to use broad categories such as seasons and holidays and then move on to other categories like color, palette, design, and theme. Each of my creation stations has my supplies organized in the same way so I know how to find things exactly where I need them. Next to my wall of cubbies, I have my desk and work area and this is where I spend the majority of my time. I have my printer and all of my printing supplies. I have my rainbow coordinated cardstock. I have my pens and washi tape. And this is also where I have my computer, my punches, and my personal cutting supplies. My work table is adjacent to my desk, and this is where I do my scrapbooking as well as film videos. The last corner of my craft room is where I like to call my little sewing and knitting and jewelry making corner. I have all of those supplies organized in drawers and cubbies and ready to go whenever I'm in the mood to do those types of projects. So if you're ready to see more, let's dig in and get into all the drawers and cubbies of my craft room. This is my cutting station and you might have seen this in one of my previous videos where I showed how I store and organize my Sizzix and Sizzlet dies. But I just wanna kind of give you an overview of this entire cutting station. Let me just take a minute here and say this countertop is at standing height. This cabinet was a purchase from Joanne many, many years ago. It's an oldie but goodie and it had a nice height to it. So I ended up just putting a piece of plywood on top and then a cutting mat and then putting my cutting equipment on top. But I really do love having it at standing height. So on top of this cutting station is my Brother Scan and Cut and my Anna Griffin Empress die cutting machine. And then uh, these are my decorative border strips. And there is a video that shows you just how I have all of these border strips organized in here. I have some additional strips here and some baskets up my peg wall that also holds some more of my cutting dies. 
I have two little baskets here which store some of my thinlet metal dies. I don't have a huge collection of those um, because as I've mentioned before, I'm mostly a scrapbooker. I like to keep my roll of white vinyl handy as I've mentioned. So when I get a, a new die, I can just add the white vinyl to the front of it and just keep those all labeled and handy and ready to go. I also have an easel where I attached a magnet sheet and I keep some of my most used dies here. I also have some fun little goodies, a, a favorite cup, my scissors handy, and some more baskets. And these are some of my plates for the Empress die cutting machine. So let's take a look underneath my cutting station and we'll zoom in and we can show you what I have here. So on this first shelf, I have all of my plates, which are easily handy, so I can just grab them and use them for my cutting. And I did uh, show also how I have these color-coded so I know which washi tapes go with which dies. I have here um, a little personal trimmer and my decal trimmer. This is an oldie but goodie. I like to keep one of my big scoring boards under here, some scratch paper. And then this slot holds um, the long uh, legal size embossing folders. Over here, I have some more accessories for my die, my long die cut, some adhesive strips, um, some extra little sizzlet dies some extra, these are my long embossing folders. This is one of my trays for some alphabets. You can see I've also got those labeled with the white vinyl on the front. And these are some of the old, old goodie Sizzlix alphabets. And then this is my binder with all of my quick cuts dies in it. And so this one just opens up and you can see I have all of my 12 inch border dies stored in this binder. And that just goes right under my cutting station. And next to that, I have the cart from Michael's. This is one of the recollections carts. And I really like this cart because for one, it's on wheels so you can just roll it right out. And for two, it has compartments that are big enough to hold these great plastic cases. And these are also still available. They're called scrapbook cases. And I really like these cases because they'll slide right in the slot, but they also can contain um, maybe like a project or a grouping of, of supplies that you might have in your craft room. So right now I'm using some of these for uh, my overflow jewelry making items. So I have a case here with leather scraps and string in it and leather cord. I have a case for whenever I want to do my metal clay. I can just grab this case and I have everything contained in there for when I'm working with metal clay. I also have a case for wire and a case for bags and tags. When I'm all finished with a jewelry piece, I can use that. My bottom two uh, containers hold supplies for the Heidi Swap cinch machine. So these have all my O-rings and different things and different kits to make those. And that's really convenient to have those all in a container as well. On top of the cart, I put an old, old cutting board that we had around the house. And the reason I did that is so that I could put my giant, paper cutter because there's always a need, even though we have all these wonderful, small portable paper cutters, I, I always find that there's a need for this really big paper cutter and I needed a little extra room. So that just gave me a platform to use. And then when I do need to cut it, like, as I mentioned, it's great because it's on wheels and I can just roll it out and use it. And then when I'm finished, just slide it right back under there. Okay. And underneath, I just want to mention these drawers just have some miscellaneous supplies that I use. This one has some cups for if I want to do a party gift 
for, with vinyl on it and different things like that, some scrap paper and so forth. So on this side of the cabinet, I have an identical Recollections cart from Michaels. You can see this one's been well used and, and loved. On top of the cart, I have my Sizzix Big Shot and my old red Sizzix machine, just in case I need some of those old goodies. And then in this cart, I have some different supplies. So I have a box here with all of my Cricut cartridges and different supplies. I have a box with foil, which I use with the Heidi Swap Mink machine, and I have my foil supplies. And I love it because I can just grab this box and go and work on that project when I need to use it. I have some miscellaneous card kits when I'm ready to make some cards. I have a calligraphy box, which has all of my calligraphy supplies in there. Uh, this one is a fun one left over from my kids. We have a shrink art box. You know, that's still fun to use sometimes. So you always have to have the shrink art and some Sharpies available. And then I do have some more cinch kits for my Heidi Swap machine. These are the boards and different pieces to make books. And then at the bottom, no craft room is complete without a box of glitter. And so I have on the bottom here, my box of glitter. So I really like being able to contain my different supplies in these boxes, just grab a handle and grab it and take it to my workstation when I'm ready to use it. So I really like these parts. They're still available from Michaels and you can just roll them right in there. Okay, and now what I usually get a lot of comments on when people come and visit me in my craft room is my wall of, my wall oak cubbies, I call it. And uh, this was built over time. It, I didn't go out and buy all of these different cubbies all at once. This was moved here when we moved here about four years ago. And I had another craft room where I had different miscellaneous pieces and then I even found some of these cubbies along the side of the road one time and I, I grabbed them up because I love these cubbies. Some of these are still available from Michaels. Um, unfortunately, some of these configurations I just haven't been able to find anymore. So I wish I could refer you to those, but you'll just have to kind of see what you can find on your own. So I should mention this wall is a six by eight wall of cubbies. And each of these are about 14 inches wide. You, you can see for yourself when you go visit uh, Michael's store just about how big they are. But I like the size because of course all of our 12 by 12 supplies fit in there so perfectly. So. Up at the top, I just have some of those kind of odd things that I don't get to very much, invitations, a box, and Christmas paper. I have a shelf here for my cinch machine and some other different supplies. Right here on these shelves is where I keep my card making card stock. And I don't have a huge supply. This is the eight and a half by 11 size card stock because mostly I use 12 by 12, so that's all in my paper category, but when I'm making a card, I like to have just kind of a supply right here handy. And then the same for these two shelves. These are miscellaneous printed cardstock and solid cardstock. And my kids like to come and make cards and, and make um, different crafts that they need to do for school. And so I like having a supply of cardstock that they know they can just come in here and grab and I don't mind them getting into any of this. I also always keep a huge stack of white cardstock. I think every craft room probably has that. I usually just keep that on a shelf by itself. And then I also like having my Bristol on a separate shelf as well. So those are really the papers that I reach for quite often. Under that, I have um, these boxes, which I, I found at Michael's also, but these are really hard to find. I don't know if they discontinued carrying them, but I do like because I do like these because these cubbies are smaller and so you have to find just the right size box that will fit in them. So every time I could find one, 
I would snatch it up, but unfortunately they didn't carry them very often. So on these shelves, I have a box and I just keep them open where I keep art paper. This is vellum and drafting paper, different kinds of things like that, rice paper in that box. Those are my art papers. I have sticker paper here because my kids and my, my girls and myself, we love making stickers. So I have different kind of sticker supplies and sticker paper in that one. I have all my metallic paper grouped together since that's kind of a specialty paper. I like to be able to reach for that. And then my watercolor paper, whenever we're working on watercolors, I keep that separated. And then I have a box here with my cellophane bags. My girls are really into making cards and stickers. And so if we need to mail those off, we have those bags. And then of course, we all need our magnet sheets. Those are so heavy, they kind of just sit on the shelf by themselves for when we're organizing our metal dies. And then down here, each of my girls have has their own craft box. Um, this is, one of my girls made these cute little stickers. Aren't they adorable? So we spend a day working on those and cutting those out. And my other daughter, has her little box with stickers and artwork that she's created. And these are all ready to go. These are on her website, ready to uh, send out if she needs to send those off. So those are some really cute little sticker packs. So it's really fun when you have things organized and you're able to share that space with other people, especially your children, if they're interested in the same things you are and everything's handy and ready to go. My girls love coming down here. These are just some of my old, old CM stickers that I just never wanted to give up and I keep those there. And then I have a box of my old fancy scissors and some extra personal trimmers in there from the good old days. All right, so we're gonna work on this column now and I'll take you through this. Uh, these boxes are labeled just with what they have in them some of my old creative memories, alphabets, die cuts, and some crazy glue. This is an overflow of album projects that I wanna to get to at some point. I have a little box with origami paper because that's fun to do too. And then I have a whole Sharpie box. So I wanna just mention right now, these boxes I just recently found at Target and I was so excited because they fit in this perfectly and I had a really hard time finding something that would fit and these are um, I found this in the bathroom section at Target and they just slide right in and that one I found was perfect for my sharpies next to it I have some more Martha Stewart boards some folders and these are where I keep my 12 by 12 sleeves which is how I organize my paper. And there's a whole video that you can watch on how I organize my paper. But I like to keep those handy. I also have two bins here. And if you have any of these bins yourself, these are, I don't think they make these anymore, but you'll notice they only came with one uh, of these carriers. And I ended up, getting two of these boxes with one carrier, but I ended up putting both carriers in the same box. I hope that makes sense. So anyhow, I liked having my transfer, my heat transfer in one bin and my vinyl transfer in another bin for when I'm working with those mediums in my room. Okay. These next four drawers are really fun. These are my ribbon. I wish, I know I've seen some beautiful craft rooms with walls of ribbon. I don't have that much wall space because I have my wall of cubbies. And so I ended up using the Recollections cubes with the dividers in it. And I found that that actually works really well for my ribbon. So I have my ribbon color coded. I have some black, white, silver there, some orange, pink, red in this drawer. And you can see how those slots just keep the ribbon standing up so you can see it. In this drawer, I have my purples and blues. 
And the all different sizes are great because they can all fit together. And here we have some of my greens and neutrals in here. So those bins really work well for me. It took four drawers in order to hold down my ribbon, but that works. Underneath that, I have some miscellaneous supplies. I don't really get to very often. These are some templates, uh, old templates we used to use way back when, when we were scrapping. And then these are just some old stamping supplies and wood blocks for stamps. So those are things that they're there if I need them, but I don't get into that very often. Up top, if you look across, you'll see it's kind of up and out of the way. I keep my extra 12 by 12 scrapbooks from Creative Memories. These are all of my projects that I want to get to at some point. But um, anyhow, I do like having them here. You know, way back when we had two different sizes with Creative Memories. We had the Premier size and we have now the True Refills, the True 12 by 12. So I do separate those two out. And then on these shelves, um, these are the same cubbies I use for my paper. And I found they work perfectly for separating out the different types of pages. So I have my pocket pages, my small portrait, my portrait 12 by 12 pages, and then my true portrait pages. And that works for me to keep all of those handy and accessible right within my reach. And next to it, I have my big section of page protectors. So you can see, I have a, a lot of scrapbooking ahead, right? Yeah. Okay, next to that, I have my photo pockets, but this one is my fun one, and I have a video that shows you just how to use these photo folders, and I love keeping all my photo folders right here handy. So I just sat down one day and made a whole bunch of these printed them, cut them, folded them, and so I have those handy whenever I'm ready to organize my photos. And um, I do suggest you watch the photo folders video because that really has revolutionized how I organize my, my photos once I have them printed. Before we move on to paper, let's take a look at this fun cabinet here. Now, this might give away how long I have been in the whole craft arena because these are the old, old timey stamps. So way, way even before I started scrapbooking, I loved stamping and my mom and I would go and collect stamps from different thing, different places, craft fairs, and then the stores popped up. And so this is my collection of all the different old, wooden backed stamps. Now I just want to point out that I do have these in plastic containers and if you look underneath you can see these are actually picture frames. These are acrylic picture frames and so the, I, I'm pretty sure these are still available. You can look on Amazon to try to find them. This is the 11 by 14 size and I found long ago that this was a great way of storing my stamps because I can just take that tray out when I want to work on a birthday card and I've got all those stamps handy and ready to go. It is kind of like a little puzzle to try to fit them all in there but once you get them in there it's kind of fun to just see everything all together. And then two of those trays are able to fit in each slot. And that's about all you wanna put on these shelves because of the weight of the wood stamps. So I do have these all categorized into the different groups, baby kids, ladies, angel, fancy, travel stars, you get the idea, letters, lots of letters. I love my letters. As I mentioned before, I am a font girl. Okay. Underneath all of these different trays and all the different categories, I do want to point out this container. This is something that's still available at Michael's and it's one of the big craft containers. And if you have a collection of these little tiny mini alphabets, which are actually ones that I like using whenever I'm working on jewelry, um, they're great for working with metal clay. These are fun and they fit right in here and then I have them labeled mini wood alphas, and those go right back in the shelf. 
This will also kind of give a hint as to uh, old, old timey Mrs. Grossman stickers. This is kind of a fun collection of all those old Mrs. Grossman stickers that, you know, you just can't, you just can't get rid of those. They're just nostalgia right there. So I do keep those on my own little shelf as well. Okay, underneath that, this is actually my, my two whole cubbies of my cling stamps. And I'm just gonna pull those out so you can see. I do have them organized just like um, I was shown in those great videos on how to organize your stamps, where you put them in the DVD sleeves and then um, they're all by category. I don't have these by manufacturer because I just don't have that many of them. So uh, for me, it's better to have these by category so I can just kind of see uh, what I need and then slide them back in. And of course, you know, I have a lot of alphabets right here. Those are my favorite. Okay, so let's talk paper. I have another video where I really went into a lot of detail about just how I have all of these paper cubbies organized, but I do want to point that out here. This whole row of three cubbies are my big collections of paper. So I have uh, baby girl, baby boy, and then I have my palettes. I have Candy Shop, Peacock, and Chana. These are all the big palettes that work together. And then I have some backstock paper here. I do have some paper that uh, I designed, which I just had to buy a whole bunch of. So hopefully someday I'll get to use all that up. On this row, I have it organized by season. So I have spring, summer, fall, and winter, including holidays. So I do in each of the different seasons have all of the different holidays and all the different paper that pertains to those holidays. So in my winter section, I have Christmas and I have a lot of different Christmas kits. And uh, this is also where I mentioned how I store the smaller collections in these 12 by 12 pockets. And then I use an Avery tab to label the collection on the side. So after the seasons, you have your themes and that's where you'll have celebrations and parties and you'll have travel, the different types of travel, outdoor travel, abroad travel, beach travel, vintage travel, all the different travel. And then I have a whole section here just on school. So these are all the different school collections and what I use when I'm working on my kids' school books. This also includes sports and scouts here in that cubby. So I just want to point out, this is unfortunately another one of those cubbies that is no longer available, but I did get one of them and it has a little window and two drawers. And I, I do really love this cubby. And if you have one of these, I found a perfect thing to put in these are the different embellishments that go with different kits. So these are all the creative memories embellishments. And then I just put a a chalk label on the top and then I was able to write which collection it went through and those are kind of fun to see through the window. I do want to mention these these plastic containers. I think you can still get these at Hobby Lobby. I've seen them a few times there. They are a little tricky to find but I did find recently at Target these plastic containers and they've come back twice now. These are uh, come out during the school season and again I added my chalk labels on the top so I can just write what's in there and so I have different collections in these containers and they fit absolutely perfectly in this drawer. So always pop into the dollar bin at Target because you never know what you might find there. Sometimes you'll find things that just work perfectly with your containers and cubbies. Okay, next I wanna show you these three cubbies that each have four drawers in each cubby. I think occasionally uh, these are still available and if you have them, I'll just show you what I was able to use them for. I really love this style of cubby. 
And I love drawers because it's so great to store things in drawers. So first here, these are the drawers that I use for scrapbooking. I have my mini alphabets stored in here and those are just easy to grab. All the different alphabets and letters in that cubby. And this one I have my kids and pets stickers and these are the deco file folders that Creative Memories used to have. And I have these all categorized by different themes. So I have school, toddler, different Disney, things like that. Now these deco file folders were a great way of organizing stickers um, when they just came out with sticker pack after sticker pack. And we tried binders for a while, we tried baseball card sleeves. Anyhow, I ended up landing on this way of storing my stickers because it was so easy to flip through and grab a sticker that I needed in that category. So that's the way I've stored all of my excess stickers for my scrapbooks. Now, when I have collections that come with stickers, I do store those in these collection folders. So those that are meant to go with the paper and embellishments and go as a set, those are all stored here. These are the extras. Okay, under that, I have my titles and vellum. I do love titles. And this is where I have a whole slew of different folders where I have um, those large sticker titles and from all the different kits that they used to have, these beautiful sticker letters. And then I also have my laser titles here. And this is where the my favorite moments to memories are in here. And then we have a whole section on vellum. We went through a whole phase with Creative Memories where we loved vellum. And so I have all those different vellum quotes and titles tucked into folders there. Now, I do want to mention that um, you may not have access to these deco fold folders, deco file folders. These are kind of an older product Creative Memories had, and I actually ran out. So I decided to take an old scrapbook page and use my tab board and just punch a tab and make my own folder. You'll see I haven't labeled that yet, but anyhow, it's so easy to do. You just cut that down, make a fold in it, and then those can fit right in this drawer. So these drawers are a perfect size. The next one I have are borders and edges. This is where I keep long border strips that don't belong necessarily with a kit. I have some more of the folders that I made, you can see, and these are where I have my beautiful laser cut um, embellishments. I really, really love the laser cut strips that Creative Memories has come out with. And so I like to keep those tucked away because they're a little on the delicate side. So I just have a little folder and I keep those tucked in with my, and I keep those tucked in my drawer with my borders and edges. This is also where if you still have some of those long dimension sticker strips, that's a great place to store those all together in this drawer too. Okay, so you can see I just have all those different strips. Okay, let's move on to these four drawers. And here I have seasonal stickers. Again, same idea as with my kids and pets except these are grouped into seasons. You know how I love my categories. So these are the old seasonal stickers from all the different miscellaneous sticker packs I collected over the years. Easy and ready to grab. If I need to just work on a certain season, I grab that folder. Here's a summer folder and I can just flip through and look and see what kind of summer stickers and different things I have. And then that slides right back in to my little drawer until I'm ready to use it again. I also have a drawer for my adhesive. This is where I keep my extra, my refills, um, my tape, different types of adhesive that I need for all my different crafting supplies. This has an overflow of pens, so I, if I have extra pens and different supplies there, I have them in that drawer. And this one is I call it my paper drawer, but really it's my scrap drawer. And this is where I keep all my extra smaller sized scrap paper. 
And this is all color coded. You can see I took and put the color in the tab of what's inside the folder. So if I need just a small piece of paper or a strip, I know I can come in this drawer and just grab that and have that handy. So that's paper. Over here, I have more art supplies. Here's where I keep my stamp cleaners. Again, I'm on the smaller scale of stamp <laughs> stamping, so I just have one drawer where I keep my stamp cleaners. I also keep my stamp blocks in a drawer. Those are handy. And then these are some of my inks that I keep as a backup for refilling my pads. And then I do have a drawer where I have some boxes with pastels, oil pastels, and actually I spec some uh, acrylics in there as well. Okay, so I wanna get into all these drawers. This one holds my metal accents. This is more for uh, mixed media and different distressing techniques. So I have all my different tools and supplies for metal and distressing in there. I have a drawer that's just for my colorizing where I have my perfect pearls and different mediums, some mixing blocks and different things in there, my daubers. And then in this drawer is my punch boards and I, I love my punch board. So this is where my tab punch board is, which is how I made those folders for the die cuts in these drawers. It has the boxes and um, the frame board. So those fit really nicely in the three drawer units. These units are still available uh, at Michael's. Underneath that, I have a couple drawers where I just have a few of my leftover punches. These are more punches, kind of more for office supply, my tab punch and my planner punches. And then I have um, my alphabet punch here. That's kind of a, a specialty punch, so I keep that there. And then here, I have all of the corner punches for my Martha Stewart punches. Since again, I don't really use the corner punches very much, I went ahead and kept those just in the drawer over here instead of with my main punches. Under, I have again one of the uh, four slot cubbies, and these are the paper holders. And I love those because they fit perfectly inside those slots. I always like keeping cardboard handy for all those miscellaneous things. I have my layout boards that go with my power palettes. I have a whole slew of extra layout boards. And then this is where I keep my baseball card pages and my plastic pages here in that cubby. Okay, since we're here, let's go ahead and talk about this cubby down here. This one is one of those that um, is kind of tricky to open. So I just keep some of my extra fancy handmade papers in here that if I know I need something super duper fancy, I can pull those out and use those. And I don't need to get into this drawer very often, so that's a good thing. It is on the bottom and it is kind of tricky to close. Okay, so now I wanna just talk about these cubbies right here. This is where I keep some of the different projects that I'm working on for my scrapbooks. And each one of the boxes is labeled with whose scrapbook it is and which album I'm working on. These are the Creative Memories Power Palette boxes, so you can organize your entire album and lay that out and then just store it in the box until you're ready to scrapbook. I have had these boxes for quite a while and my original elastic that was um, used to hold these together uh, ended up disintegrating and so I was able to find some of the hair tie elastic and I just redid all of the elastic on my boxes and of course I love black and white polka dots so I picked that elastic but that's why my boxes have these different um, polka dot elastic. Really easy to do. You can just take the old ones out, tie a knot, and put a new one in. So those just house my different projects that I'm working on. I never have a shortage of projects. 
As well as my power layout boxes, I have some of the Iris scrapbook bins that I have a few other projects in, which I kind of pick and choose what I feel like working on. And so I love having everything contained in a box and I can just grab it and work on that when I'm ready. So in this little section, I have, again, these are the bins from Target, which I love. They are such a perfect size and they slide right in to the um, cubbies. And in here I have my uh, peekaboo pockets. You know how much I love my peekaboo pockets. And I have my write again uh, stickers for uh, helping when you make mistakes journaling. And then I have some extra sleeves, the CD sleeves uh, in there, easy access. And this one is where I keep my photo paper. And I'll be doing an in-depth video on how I go about printing, but I keep all of my photo paper here handy. And these are also the iris boxes. This is the five by seven box, and this is the four by six box. So I keep that paper right there handy. And then I have on the back, yes, I love Red River paper. On the back, I keep which paper I have in the box. So I know exactly the printer settings and what I have in my box ready to use. Okay, and that fits right back in there. Next to those bins is where I keep my large ABC stickers. So I have a whole pocket for white ABC stickers, all my white. And then I have a pocket for my black ABC stickers. And then next to those, I have a paper holder which keeps all of my colored ABCs. And these are all by color in rainbow order, and then my metallics and black, brown, and neutrals and multicolors in the back. So again, if I need a color, I just pull this pocket out and I'm ready to go use and create a title with my stickers. And that sits right here in my cubby. Under my alphabet stickers is where I have some of my cutting mats if I need those my stamp tools, my old, my stamp guide fits right in there, and some old Creative Memories templates and my stencils for the cutting system are tucked in there. So those are just kind of miscellaneous items over there. And then in these cubbies, I keep my ink. So I have my photo paper and my ink right here handy. I have the ink for my little Canon crafter printer and my Pro printer. And then under that, I have a long box, which holds my rulers and my sticker guides for when I'm making sticker titles. And that just slides right in there. That's also a case by Iris. Underneath that, I have a little letterpress cart, and this has been replaced by a larger letterpress cart, but this original one was actually the same size that the cubbies fit on top. It was the same width as the cubbies, so that's why my cubbies sit directly on top of this letterpress. And in this one are all of my stamping supplies, and I know this is just the small little crafter ink supply, but I keep my ink pads in here, and I did label on the side of the drawer what's in each of them. I have my little small ink pads here. This is one of the tool cases and I found the dew drops fit just perfectly. And uh, if my husband's wondering where some of his toolboxes went, well, there they are with my little dew drop ink pads in it. Next, I have a drawer for the embossing powder and I have all those ready and handy. And then Again, I'm the big alphabet girl, so I have my alphabets in this drawer, and these are the four by six iris cases. And I found these are great for holding all the different wood alphabets in here. And so that's where I have some of the larger ones just tucked away in here, ready for using in the stamping. And those fit nicely in these recollection drawers as well. This also has some miscellaneous 
old tiny alphabets that I have down here and just some more cases for my stamps. Okay, so I want to just review what I have in these three bins right here. These were a purchase from Michaels many, 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 many years ago. But I have found that I use these quite a bit. I wish they still had these cubbies, but I do think they are long gone. I'll just show you what I do have in mind, though. So first in this bin, and I do keep these boxes with the lids off of them so I can just pull them out like a drawer. Um, I have my cards. These are all cards that are already pre-made. And I can, if I'm looking for a card, I can just grab one and, and send it off or grab it and go. So those are pre-made cards. The next bin is my glue gun bin. And this used to be really, really full, but my kids have um, really gone through my glue guns and glue. The next bin are my fabric pins. And then underneath that, I have my Christmas bin. And I found that when it's Christmas time, I like to keep all of those little goodies and supplies together. So if I'm making tags or gifts or different things, I have all of those different accessories in the same bin and I can just grab that and work on Christmas goodies. And these are fun ones that you can find at Target in the dollar section. And I, when I find those, I like to just throw them in my Christmas bin for the season. So over here is kind of what I have my card making and different accents. I know a lot of scrapbookers also use these kind of products for decorating their pages. I kind of have more of a streamlined approach. So I like using these goodies for card making. And I'll just go through what I have in these bins. So this first bin is what I call my accents. And in here, again, I use those iris cases. I love these cases for storing all the different um, ephemera and memorabilia and different things. So I'll have a case with all my little rhinestones. I'll have a case with what I call bling. So I have my bling in there, a case for metal pieces. I'll have foil, just different things that I'll use for making the different cards and some that I need to put away. Ribbon, stickers, frames, rub-ons. So all those are in my accents drawer. And then over here, I also just call this card making, but I also have more of the same um, accents. I have a Valentine's box. And more just bins. Here's a baby boy bin for when I need to make cards and have different supplies ready for those. Okay. Under that, I have my blank card bin, a bin where I have blank cards ready to make different types of cards. Under that, I have envelopes. And again, more blank cards. These are larger size cards underneath. And here I have more different panels and types of paper for layering on the cards and that's in that bin. In this bin I have my embossing, some different embossing, old metal embossing folders, plastic embossing, and then my wax. And then in this last bin I have my Xylon sticker machine, my big one and my small one, and some refills. So I just want to point out what I have on my little printer cart here. This is my absolute favorite printer, my printer of choice. It's called the Canon Crafters Printer. And I will give you some more detail about this and how I print in another video, as I mentioned. And I have that right here accessible. It is wireless, so you don't need to have it plugged into your computer, which is awesome. Under that, I have my scanner for when I get in those uh, rare moments where I really want to get all my pictures scanned. I have my Canon scanner here. And then underneath, I like keeping all of my printing stuff together. So I have my larger printer paper, my plain paper, because this printer also does plain paper printing as well as photo printing. And then just some extra um, different types of photo paper that I have in my bin down here. I do have on the wall here the Recollections Embellishment Center, which I also purchased years and years ago. I ended up finding those little jars at Target, and they worked really well in this system, too. 
So I ended up just putting tags and different pretty little things and some uh, glitter and different things up in those uh, containers just so just something fun and visually interesting to look at on my wall. And then next to my workstation, I have this three by three set of cubbies. And in my paper organizational video, I went through and talked about how I have all of these rainbow papers organized and stored in these cubbies. I also have two cubbies where I keep uh, albums that I'm working on just within reach down here. And then underneath that, I have a set of three different cubbies. So here in this drawer is where I keep the Martha Stewart doily punch. Those are kind of big and bulky, so they needed a drawer on their own. I have an empty drawer. Can you believe it? And then over here, <laughs> and then over here, I have my planner supplies. So I have my planner stamps, which I use for uh, working when I'm working in my planner. Some also I keep my highlighters in here and these um, are also from Target. I really like these kind of frosted uh, clear containers. Then I have uh, some more stamps for my planner, my punch board for the different planner holes, and then just some extra paper, planner paper down here. Over here, this is what works well to have right next to my paper and these are my journal cards. And I have all of these categorized in color order as well. So if I need a card for either journaling or backing a photo, I can just reach in here and grab one of these sheets. And those are easily accessible and ready to go here in that drawer. So the top drawer has my different colors in it. And then the bottom drawer has some of my ruled paper and my neutrals and some miscellaneous paper in there. So next is my desk area, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going into detail about my pens and washi tape because you can watch the video on that. But I do want to mention that I really enjoy having a pretty workspace, and I love having things that are important to me, artwork from my girls that they've made, um, different little... My One of my daughters made this little cat for me, and I love having that right there. Just all those fun little things that make you happy and that bring joy those should all be right near you and surrounding you in your workstation and so I try to keep that in mind with the things that I have closest to me and that when I come down here I can just take a deep breath and relax and just go ah this is my happy place this is where I love to work so next to my desk area where I you have my computer and my planner set up I have my creating table and I just want to mention here, both of these tables are tables that were our family dining room tables, which I have repurposed for my craft room. And my husband helped me actually lift the tables so that they worked out working in the space and also created a standing work table, which I really love to work at. So these are higher than normal which is why those fun Ikea cabinets can just roll right under so easily. And those are pretty a pretty easy modification that you can do if you have tables of your own so that you can get extra storage underneath. Now on top, this is where I do my filming and my scrapbooking and just about anything creative. This is my paper crafting station. And on top of it, I ended up I have two things. I have two layers. Actually, I have this cutting mat for when I do my sewing. I can take everything off and have a large cutting mat for cutting out patterns and working with sharp instruments. And then on top of that, I found a board at Home Depot and then just covered that with some matte contact paper. And I love this marble look. It's just a really soft, pretty, uh, surface to work on and I think it shows up nicely in the videos. So that's an easy kind of your own DIY desk mat is just to get a piece of board and then cover it in something pretty that you might like to have as your workstation. So that's what I have both on my crafting table and on my desk. 
And this is my tool caddy. And they have these in various manufacturers have made them over the years. And this is where I keep all of my necessary scrapbooking supplies. So I have post-its, I have my um, adhesive in one of the slots, I have scissors, I have my folder, ruler, I have my Cricut tweezers and, and different Cricut tools in here, scissors, I have my pencils and uh, some black pens in here, and I have a section for all my blades and sharp instruments here and also some more adhesive in this section. So this is really handy. Underneath this spinner, mine does have little drawers, which I keep other things in, like erasers and my crazy glue, pickup sticks, different things like that um, are in those drawers. So those all spin and I can reach whatever I need right there next to my workstation. Okay, so I just wanted to talk about these three IKEA Helmer cabinets, and I did do a video when I had two and I first started organizing my paper punches, but I did add a third cabinet because I decided I wanted to contain my entire paper punch collection just in these three cabinets. So whenever I needed a paper punch, I could grab it from one of these drawers. So I did recategorize and include all the different punches and now everything is contained in these three cabinets. So the first cabinet, I have kind of my general categories. I have birthday and kids in here. I have my hearts. I have my stars. I have my fancy punches. I have my corners and tags, and then I have on the bottom my shapes. This has the old CM shape makers as well in this cabinet. Next to that, I have a whole cabinet that is devoted to borders, except on the top, I do have my labels and banners drawer. So in this drawer, I have my word bubble punches and all my labels and banners. And then these drawers all have borders. Now I did decide to categorize these by manufacturer so that I knew if I was looking for a border, I knew which drawer it would be in. So I do have two drawers that have my Creative Memories borders punches in, and you can see how many punches, even these giant ones, fit in one of the Helmer drawers. It's really, really great. And then I have, there's the new pedal punch that just came out. The next drawer down, I have my EK borders. Quite a few fit in this drawer of the EK borders. And then the last two are my Martha Stewart borders. And those I just have kind of piled in there because they are kind of an odd shape. So I do have my larger borders down here. I was able to fit all of my Martha Stewart borders in that drawer. Then the last cabinet, as you know, I love categorizing into seasons. So this cabinet is my seasonal cabinet and I have spring in this drawer, all my spring related punches. I also have my spring flower punches because spring was quite a big punch category. I have summer and travel, which has a lot of room to grow. Fall, which has Halloween seasons. Winter, all my snowflakes. And then my bottom drawer is Christmas. So those are all my Christmas related punches. Okay, so that's how I got my entire punch collection into now three of the Ikea Helmer cabinets and I love it. When I'm done, I can just push these right under the table and they're out of the way. But when I'm working, I can roll them out and have them super handy. So you may be wondering, well, what happened to your border maker cartridges? And ta-da, I have the new Alex cabinet on casters. This is the low rolling cabinet from Ikea 
and I decided that I really wanted this as kind of an additional workstation right next to my scrapbooking table. So first I just want to show you how easily it just rolls right out and you can use it as an additional workspace, which I love. I have my cutting mat up here and I have just a small trimmer. And then I think now this is my favorite drawer. I have my border maker cartridges. My entire collection fits in just one of the drawers. And I also have my border maker system tucked here on the side. So I have these just kind of categorized by theme in the drawer and I can just kind of reach in and get what I need just by looking and seeing what's on the side of the cartridge. These are heavy, but this drawer can handle it. So I'm really excited about the quality of the Ikea cabinet. My next drawer down. Okay, if you're a scrapbooker, you've got these. I know you've got these. Over the years, we've kind of collected our cutting system templates. This is what works with the cutting mat and our blades. And so I have those just ready and handy when I need to cut a shape. I have my mat, I have my blades, and I have all the different patterns right here, easily accessible in this drawer. Okay, my next drawer down is just kind of my necessary drawer, <laughs> I call it. It's kind of my office supply drawer. This is where I keep my scratch paper whenever I'm making a tag or a tab. I have those in there. I have some post-it notes, my um, polka dot, my dot grid um, index cards. I have my wipes, staplers, my label machine, label tape, and of course, chapstick. Never, every craft room needs chapstick. The next drawer down, I have just some additional tools and I have my personal trimmer, my small scoring board, and etc. The next one, I have my glass. If I need this for stamping or mixed media, I have these ready. And I have my old Creative Memories trimmer and a Martha Stewart trimmer right there. These drawers are super wide, super deep, and can hold a lot. The last drawer is one that I just have some miscellaneous um, computer, my PC, because I switched over from a Mac, but I can't give up my PC and some cords in that drawer. So I really love this Ikea Alex cabinet on casters. It's a great addition to your craft room. The last section in my craft room is what I like to call my sewing, knitting, and jewelry making station. I'm not gonna get into all the different containers and drawers and bins I have stored over here, but it is where I do come to work on my sewing projects if I'm making pajamas for my kids, or if I'm making some jewelry, or if I wanna to get to my yarn and knitting needles. This area is where I get to store all of those goodies for when I'm ready to do those types of projects. So can you believe it? We got through the entire room. I know somebody looks like they're tired. Well, if you stayed with me till the very end, congratulations. I hope you did find some good ideas and some inspiration from my craft room. Until next time, I hope you take time to craft some joy.